A small battalion of Ukrainian soldiers are now in Oklahoma to learn how to operate the latest addition to their armory against Russia. About 90 to 100 troops arrived at Fort Sill Tuesday. They'll be training with U.S. military for the next several months. The soldiers will learn how to use the Patriot missile system. In, in this case, that stands for Phased Array Tracking Radar for Intercept on Target. The U.S. is providing Ukraine one of these. Uh, they cost over a billion dollars, and it takes about 90 people to operate them. Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh joins me now to talk about a whole variety of things. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Milley, and uh, Secretary Austin are going to be in Germany this week to meet with the uh, other defense leaders. Um, what, are, where, what questions are they going to try to answer, and what's the hope out of this meeting? Uh, what will resolve out of this meeting? Thanks, John, for having me and appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight. Um, as you mentioned on Friday, the secretary and Chairman Milley are convening the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, where they will be hosting uh, approximately 50 ministers of defense from all around the world. Um, and this group is convening to meet to decide and to figure out what other materials and support and capabilities they can provide Ukraine. Um, just recently, we announced a package that was approximately $3 billion in aid to Ukraine. One of the systems that you just mentioned is the Patriot, which is one of our most effective, most lethal um, air defense systems in the United States arsenal. Um, and so we're looking for our other countries, our other partners and allies around the world to help us support Ukraine. And as the secretary has said before, um, and the president has said, we are in this uh, for as long as as it takes. And so that's what we're doing. And that's what the secretary will be reiterating again on Friday in uh, in Germany. And Sabrina, what is the assessment of where the battle space stands right now? Uh, you know, it's been uh, this kind of bombardment after bombardment is the is the thinking that with uh, a little more help, if more countries gave uh, tanks and more uh, more material that 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 Ukraine might be able to go on the offensive and really take advantage of this moment. What's the assessment of where things stand uh, in terms of the battle? Well, we're seeing heavy fighting uh, in the Donbass within the area of Bakhmut and in Solodar. Um, we're seeing the, the Russians continuing to dig in, continuing to use brutal offenses, whether that's through drones that they've acquired through Iran or other tactics. And so our goal here is to make sure that Ukraine has what it needs, both on the battlefield and the, on the front lines and in their air defenses. And so part of uh, what Secretary Austin will be talking about at the contact group is, is seeing what other capabilities other countries, other partners and allies can provide to Ukraine. Um, again, this is a, a, a grinding battle that we're seeing um, in the East and the Ukrainians are not giving up, they're not giving in. Um, and so we have to do whatever we can to help them in this fight. Does that mean, Sabrina, putting pressure on Germany? The Ukrainians would like uh, some of these Leopard 2 tanks um, the, the German chancellor has been reluctant. Uh, is this is an instance in which the U.S. says uh, we've contributed a lot. Now it's time for Germany to, to do more. Well, every sovereign country will make decisions that are that are right for them. Um, that part of the contact group is to encourage other countries to uh, to see what they are willing to give and support to Ukraine. But it is really up to Germany or whatever other country that might be um, to see what they have in their stocks, what they're comfortable with giving. Um, but again, as you mentioned, uh, the United States has remained one of the biggest contributor to Ukraine. Uh, just most recently, again with that three billion dollar package, and we are. Are training uh, Ukrainian soldiers right now here in Oklahoma and Fort Sill um, and in Grafenvir in Germany. Um, and so we are hopeful that um, the Ukrainians will take the training that we are um, providing for them and, and be resourceful and use that on the battlefield. Let me ask you about the symbolic nature of that commitment with the Patriot missiles. The Center for Strategic and International Studies says this about the Patriot missile, quote, the fact that the United States is willing to take the risk of transferring the system expresses a strong political commitment to Ukraine. So obviously the United States has been committed to Ukraine, but the argument that, that uh, CSIS is making is that these Patriot missiles represent a next level commitment. Is that a fair way to think about it? 
Well, I, I don't know that that's um, the, the best way to think about it. I think our commitment is enduring no matter what package it might be. We have rolled out uh, presidential drawdown authorities um, in the millions to the billions. Uh, the Patriot is, of course, one of our most lethal uh, air defense systems that we have provided the Ukrainians. But other countries are also providing um, or looking into providing a Patriot if they can. Um, and so, again, every package that we provide the Ukrainians, I think, is a is another uh, uh, show of commitment and force to Ukraine um, and our strong alliance with them in this unprovoked, unjustified war um, that Russia has launched. And as you know, we're coming up on the one year anniversary on February 24th. And I think it's just another reminder to the world that we stand in solidarity with Ukraine. The New York Times has a headline Wednesday night saying that U.S. officials are getting more comfortable with Ukraine pushing into taking back Crimea, which Russia uh, invaded and took over in 2014. Uh, is that right? Well, we've never shied away from the fact by stating that Crimea is part of Ukraine. Um, Russia, as you mentioned, invaded Crimea in 2014. If Ukraine um, can and, and is willing to uh, fight for Crimea, um, they have every right to do that. That is part of their sovereign territory. And the Pentagon, is the Pentagon concerned, or I guess I should say, if you think about the uh, the amount of missiles that the U.S. is providing, now the U.S. is providing missile protection with respect to the, to the Patriots. The commitment uh, is deep for the United States. What is the concern or what is the read on President Putin when he looks at this, at the U.S. and the allies providing Ukraine with all of this, uh, that he will take this as a more direct involvement um, of, uh, and basically that the, the U.S. is... is engaged in war against Russia? Well, I certainly wouldn't be able to get into the mind of Vladimir Putin. But what I can say, I think this sends a very strong message uh, to Russia, uh, to, to leaders in Russia, that um, the United States is always going to stand on the side of protecting a sovereign state that was invaded unjustly um, by Russia. Um, this is a show of force, not just with uh, the United States. We are we have partners and allies from around the world working to see what they can provide Ukraine. So I think um, this certainly shows a, a show of force, a show of solidarity with the Ukrainians. Um, and as we continue to go on in this conflict, we've seen Russia further isolated, turning to countries like North Korea and Iran um, for for material and and weapons and. We have become all the more stronger. I think you've seen NATO become more strong um, or a tighter alliance grow um, with this conflict. And you've seen more commitments from our partners and allies all around the world um, ready to commit to Ukraine in this fight. And I think that's a real show of force to Russia. But there's also reports that the U.S. is using material that's stored in Israel and also taking stocks from South Korea. So it's draining U.S. resources as well. Uh, you talked about draining Russia. It's also draining U.S. resources. Well, the secretary has been very clear from the beginning that we're never going to drop below our readiness uh, levels. And so we feel comfortable with um, the the capabilities and the systems that we are providing Ukraine in this fight. And we'll continue to do so um, for as long as it takes. All right. Sabrina Singh from the Pentagon. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, John.